All right, welcome back, everyone. Um, we have Game Maker. We can actually move left or go move right. We can move left. Uh, we have a problem. He slides backwards, slides forward. He's doing the moonwalk. Um, when he jumps, he's just this is pretty, pretty kind of boring. Let's add some animation. Let's make it so when we move to the right, he he runs to the right. When we move to the left, he faces left and he runs to the left. And when he jumps, he looks a little bit more like he's in the middle of jumping. And then when we're not doing anything, we go right back to where he is here. We call these different animation states. State is just like, um, you can do one thing, but not multiple things. Like there's running state. He'd be running to the left or running to the right. Jumping state while he's in the air going up or falling down. And then idle state is when it's just not moving at all. So let's go ahead and let's get it looking more interesting. I wanna see this guy run, okay? so. First thing we wanna do is we wanna to go to the player object, player object. So let me get this open and here's our object player. Okay, we already have this key down left. So let's deal with, actually let's deal with key down right to begin with. And let's go ahead and hide this stuff here. All right, so let's just kind of like review what we're doing when we're doing the key down right. Okay, let's screen this in here. All right, so already we have a thing where we only want to move if there's a, a block underneath, and that's a good thing. We only want to be running if there's something we can run on, okay? So if there is an object underneath, and of course the right key is being held, we need to change the sprite. We're gonna set the sprite, so we're gonna jump over here, and we're gonna choose the sprite, which is sprite player run, there it is. Okay, let's go ahead and test this out. Does it work? Okay, notice, notice by the way, it's very important here that you notice this, is that, um, notice that, that if object at place, we have this little arrow from the middle bottom jumping to jump the point, and right after the jump to point, we have that set sprite. Okay, it's very important. Let's go ahead and try this. And by the way, problem solving technique uh, number whatever is test. All right, we have a problem. What's our problem? When I'm moving to the right, he's like frozen. And then, and then he's running. What's going on? We have a problem because when we're not moving, we shouldn't be running. And when we're moving, it should be running while it's moving. Okay, fortunately, I have the answer to it. Now you could go looking it up and all that stuff, but for time's sake, I'm gonna get right to it um, we're going to set the animation speed, okay? And um, by the way, we want to set the speed. I think we're just going to keep it at normal speed. Oh, that's just set speed. Sorry. I want animation speed. Set animation speed to one. Now, um, actually, that's going to be the default setting, and you can test it out. Uh, let's go ahead and test it out at 0.5. Uh, see if we need to slow it down. I'm not saying this is the right one, but it's always good to test because I want you to know that you can actually adjust the animation speed. And let's go back over here. And here's the problem. The problem is while we're holding down the key, we're setting the frame to zero. Well, what do we mean by frame? Well, let's take a look at Sprite for the run. Let's take a look at the running Sprite. Uh, uh, sprite player one. Um, frame zero is this one here. This is why it looks like he's sliding like that. Okay, we're not animating through. Okay, so we need, basically, we need something that will vary from frame to frame to frame, and what better to have vary than using a variable? Yeah, we're gonna use a variable. Instead of frame zero, we're gonna give it a frame of, wait for it, image underscore index image underscore index what this is is it's a variable that changes over time so if we start with frame zero in the first frame it will be zero but in the next frame it will be one and then it will be two and then it'll be three and it's just gonna it's gonna keep cycling through so now when we move to the right we should be able to run to the right and look like he's running to the right but now he's going at half speed so let's see if half speed works Kind of looks like, yeah. Eh, let's see. If, let's see what he's like at normal speed. 
let's go ahead and do it to one. Ooh, I got the peanut gallery back here telling me, no, don't do it. And let's try. Yeah, I, I think I kind of like that. Oh, except for when he falls off the edge. All right, now we have the problem though, is once we start running, we keep running. So let's deal with that. So if the object, if we're doing key down right, and the object's underneath it, blah, 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 blah. Hmm, there's a, there's a couple ways we can solve this. We could say, if there's not an object underneath, then we shouldn't be running, right? But that doesn't make as much sense. Um, what we could do is we could have it when there's no key being held down. That's probably our best bet. So I'm gonna click on add event. And I'm gonna go to key down, and there's actually a no key down. That just means that no key is being held down. Okay? And this is a pretty decent one. Um, this is one way to solve it. So we have a new event, key down, no key, and then we're gonna set the sprite to just uh, sprite player standing. So you drag it over, sprite player stand, which is, I think this one, nope, that's die, we don't want him to die. All right, not yet anyway. And so key down, no key, set sprite, player stand. There's only one sprite in there, so we don't have to worry about image index or anything like that, but we wouldn't want to animate anyway. And so we run, we let go, he stops. Now I'm moving to the left. One, he's still facing to the right and he's not running. Although he is doing the moonwalk. Oh wait, oh weird. Oh, I didn't let go long enough. Run, he's on a conveyor belt. He's running. Conveyor belt. Okay. I entertain myself sometimes as I'm making my games. It's kind of fun. All right, so let's do key down left. All right, we're going to the left. Now, we could, we could take that running sprite and then flip all of them and create a new sprite, but we don't have to. There's this thing called scale. Now, what scale is, is you can change the size. So we're gonna play around with scale a little bit, um, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, in fact, let's do this on create. No, let's not, I'm sorry. Let's do the key down, no key. And it's this thing called uh, sprite scale, or uh, scale, there it is. Set instance scale, excuse me. Now, let me just show you what happens. Horizontal, if I make it 1.5, and I run, and look at what he looks like when he's not running. Look how wide he is, okay? Let's say we're doing like Mario, and basically he grows to one and a half times his normal size. We set image scale for both horizontal and vertical, and he's not twice as big. So here's a new game mechanic you might want to work on, 1.5. All right, but now comes the fun part. So we can scale, we can make him half the size by doing 0.5 and 0.5. So now it's gonna be half the size when no key is being pressed. The interesting thing about scale is that scale doesn't change, once you've changed it, stays at that scale until you change it there. So that's pretty cool, but that's not what we want to do. So what if we take, we scale its width all the way down to zero, and then we go into the negative range, and we set it to negative one, horizontal, vertical of one, and we press play. Remember, he was facing to the right, and now he's facing to the left. So it's image scale, and now he's doing the opposite, right? Okay, so this is what we want to do. I want to take this, I'm going to cut it. I don't actually want it under key down, no key, okay? And it's only when he's going to the left we want him facing to the left. So when we hold down key to the left, we're going to set the image scale. Um, we also need to set that image sprite as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and do sprite. Once I get that in there, it's set sprite. I'm going to jump down here. And we're going to set it to Sprite Player Run, which is this one. Okay. Remember the frame has to be image underscore index. 
If you don't remember, just start typing image and you'll see all the image variables and it's image index right there, right? And then um, after that, then we want to do the scale. Oh wait, we're just going to paste it in, aren't we? Control V to paste. Did it go in? Yes, it did. Now, if I just paste it in, and notice it's now that has this little line on the left there. I'm going to just drag it so it's under here. And now we're going to, so when we're going to the left, we set it horizontal negative one. And now let's save our changes and test it out and see if it's working. Okay. Remember, run to the left. Oh, look at that. Okay, now we have a problem here. When I move to the right, we didn't change that image scale. So, the instant scale, excuse me. So now we have to fix it for both directions. Okay, key down right. We're gonna go ahead and control V, paste it in. Or not, apparently I didn't control V one more time. Yeah, I guess I have to just bring it back. That was it, instant scale. One, one. Notice it's just one, one. Oh, I did do it. It was down here. I can get rid of that now. So, if you're going to the right, just make sure you change the instant scale, but only when you're holding it down to the right. Because here's the deal. If you're running to the left and you stop, you'll still face the left. So let's run it, test it, see if we got it. By the way, nothing beats testing it. My last class, I totally forgot to check running both directions and stopping. So now it runs to the right, I let go, runs to the left, let go. When I jump in the air, I can run in the air, which is kind of fun to watch. Isn't it? <laughs> it is. All right, so let's just do the jump one. We're really close. I think we just got about everything here. Um, it's key press space. We're just going to switch the sprite here. There's no animation to it. Notice how I jump under the set speed. All right, very important you get that in there. And then let's full screen it. And then uh, what sprite is it? It's sprite player stand. Uh, no, sprite player jump. No, not climb. There, sprite player jump. This is also not animated. So, you know, you'll have to think about that uh, if you want to animate it. Uh, okay, so we're jumping. Now, the other thing is that when we land, we collide with the block. That could be a falling onto the block, or it could be running into the block to the left. What we should probably do is not only set vertical speed to zero, but this is a good time to change it back to player stand. Sprite player stand. Save your changes. Let's try jumping now. Interesting, as soon as I let go, remember how it does that? So I don't like that. It did jump, but then as soon as I let go of the key, he's back to standing, which maybe that's okay. If you like that, that's fine. Um, if you don't, what I recommend you do is you go into step, because step happens throughout the game, and you could actually, in step, you could check to see what the vertical speed happens to be. And I think you have to go to execute code. So let me get you started on that and I'll let you know and I'll show you how I would approach this. But I'm not actually gonna do it for this tutorial because I think you could kind of figure this one out. Uh, whoa, one more time. Oh, I hate it when it does this. Let's see if I can zoom in. Oh, I can. Okay, execute code. Get this stuff out of the way. Uh, we have a couple variables here. We can check things like if B speed, that's vertical speed. Okay, if vertical speed is greater than zero, that means we're moving up. Okay. Okay, so in this case, moving up. 
This is a good time to change sprite to jump. Note could also make a jump up animation here. Okay, that's kind of cool. Then you can do an if b speed less than zero. And actually, I would do it this way. I would do an else, else if vertical speed is less than zero. That means we're falling down. And if you had a sprite, you could change sprite to falling. Okay, so that could be a different either static um, or animated graphic because maybe the hands are up in the air. Okay, so that could also be a falling animation. And then finally, else. Here in my programming class, we've been talking about this stuff a lot, haven't we? You're not jumping or falling, okay? You're probably just standing. Okay. Okay. So there's how I would tackle this one. It's execute code. So I would do it in step, okay, in step. And then you can do the same thing for horizontal speed, vertical speed. So you could do things like if the horizontal speed is greater than zero, you could then animate it, make sure it's facing the right. And if the vertical speed is less than zero, animate it going to the left. You could do all of this and execute code during step, okay. So this is also a good way of handling it. This is how I would take it. But like I said, I'm going to leave that for you to come up with. At this point, I'm okay with what I got. Um, I could also do this, um, I'm gonna leave this as it is, um, and then I'll post this on the video if you're in my class right now, um, but for the rest of the class, I'm gonna leave you with the key press left, so you have, um, or right. Now we'll do the left one so you can kind of see that. I'm gonna leave this window up here. Uh, thank you so much for watching. In the next tutorial, uh, maybe we'll talk about some more animation and some more mechanics. Um, see, stay tuned for that.